has been said about the role of language in programming our minds for success and happiness. And today I would like to share with you an experiment that I started by accident a few years ago. And it suggests that by changing only one word in your language, you will have the potential of changing your life. And in order for us to understand how does a language program our minds and brains, I would like to look at another device that we use language to program, and that's the computer. You know when we write a computer program, we basically have building blocks, and these are the variables in, our, in the software that we are writing. And a programmer starts by declaring a variable, by giving it a name. And then that variable that we've given it a name, we are going to classify it. So the computer will, will need to know whether this is a number or a character or a logical variable. And then we tell the computer what to do with it, how to process it. So there, there are three stages in, in, in this process. They are naming, classifying, and eventually processing. Now, interestingly, we human somehow get our brains programmed in a similar way to computers, at least theoretically. So when a baby sees something for the first time, she or he does not have a name or even a place in their mind for, for that new thing. And they often are excited and they either ask what it is or if they are unable to, to ask, they will give it a name in their own language, the baby language. And right after that, a baby would like to know what it is, what is this thing that he or she is having. And they will try to probably put it in their mouth to, to taste it and test it. And that's the time where they start to classify it. Is it sweet? Is it bitter? Is it hot? Now, after repeated exposure to that, the child will start to process it and will have a, a mental model of it and also uh, will take a position towards it. So if it's a nice thing, it may play with it. If it's sweet, it may suck on it. And if it's bitter or hot, it may throw it away and start crying. So if you see, this is a mental model of how we learn about new things and how our brains are wired in general. And it happens interestingly in these three stages, naming, classifying, and eventually processing or even wiring these mental models in our brains. So let me just take you into a very quick exercise uh, through, through these three stages. If I show you this and I ask you what is this, I bet most of you will say it's a cockroach. And if I say, what do you think of it? Normally the answers would be along the line of disgusting, dirty, smelly, something that we don't want to be associated with. And if I ask you, what should we do with it? Most likely you'll be saying, let's kill it. Isn't that right? Yes. So, so th that's what happens when we are introduced to new things and we start to associate negative uh, uh, names with them and that these names will drive how we classify them and eventually how we uh, deal with them uh, in the long term. The word that I would like to talk about today that I'm suggesting that we, re we replace and remove from our language is the word problem. And the word that I would like to suggest that you replace it with is the word opportunity. And this is something that happened by accident a um, uh, few years ago, I was leading a faculty meeting at my university and I noticed that the word problem keep on repeated by my staff. So some of the lecturers have issues with the problematic students who don't come on time. They have problem with motivating the students. They have problem with the facilities that we have and so on and so forth. So I had that idea, what if we decide to remove the P word from our dictionary and replace it with the word opportunity. And to make this even a more exciting game, we agreed that every time anyone utters the P word, he or she will need to pay one ringgit. And we put that in a fund, we called it the opportunity fund. And we appointed one of our staff to be our opportunity fund manager. So you could imagine 
a movement started. So people, some of the people really took it on. They even took it back to homes, to their homes, and they started doing it with their families. Some of them were doing it reluctantly, so every time they are caught, someone reports them and they have to pay the worrying it to our opportunity fund manager. Anyway, towards the end of the year, we, we had in the order of 600 ringgit, and then we took that money and we went out and had lunch together, so they enjoyed it. But something started to happen, which is we, we started to be aware of the language that we use, and that was very, very important. And whenever we replace the word uh, problem with opportunity in our language, something happens in our brain. You know, our, our brain is incapable of, of holding conflicting beliefs. So if you say bad and good, the brain has to make sense of it. And because you as, let's say, a lecturer, you say, I have an opportunity. My students always come late to class. And I ask you, what's the opportunity? Your brain has that issue that's saying, what's happening here? And then start, you start to make excuses for the language that you've used and say, oh, it's an opportunity for me to make my class even more exciting, or it's an opportunity for me to try to understand what's going on in their lives. And that actually forces us to think of the problems not as a destinations, but as journeys towards achieving our goals. Now, something happened right after this where uh, a company asked me to give them a training about structured problem solving. And I thought to myself, wouldn't it be interesting if I were to share with them the idea of replacing the word opportunity with the word, sorry, the word problem with the word opportunity? And I also thought to myself, these are people I haven't met before. What if they decided not to play along? So I commissioned the design of what I called the opportunity note. So as you, as you could see, it's just like a ringgit or a dollar. And uh, I went to uh, this company and I told them, there is this idea of replacing the word problem with the word opportunity. And if you were to, uh, I'm going to give each one of you three of these notes. And if you were to utter the P word once, I will take one note from you. If you utter it twice, I'll take the other one. If you utter it three times, I'll take the third one. And if you utter it for the fourth time, you'll have to pay me real money. And we'll appoint one of you as the opportunity fund manager. So immediately one of them say, no problem. So I say, that's one, one, one opportunity right there. <laughs> so the interesting thing that happened is, but we started at 9 o'clock. Almost by 10 o'clock, I got all my opportunities back. And they started paying real money. And that's the awareness, because some of them say, no, no, I have full control of my language. I choose the word problem because this is a problem, and I want to name it a problem. But w when I challenge them to change the language, they realize that the language is actually wired in the brain, and it takes effort and awareness to change it. So this became um, um, a very interesting thing. And whenever I go and give talks and I show this, people say, do you have opportunity notes on you? And it just happened I, I have few with me. And uh, for any one of you, if you pledge to replace the P word with the word opportunity in your life, from now on, I'll give you one. This actually became a sort of exercise that the other day I was giving, sorry, a talk at uh, one of the medical universities here, and the students you know, wanted it, so they all pledged not to use the P word anymore. So now, Let's see if we were to repeat this exercise again. And if I ask you, what is this? And I want you to describe it without using any um, negative terms. Now, you may still say this is still a cockroach. And you are absolutely right. But the word cockroach is really loaded with negative connotation. The moment you think cockroach, some negative thing will come to your mind. So I would suggest that we rename it. We give it a new name. We declare it as a new variable in our brain. And I would suggest that we call it Blataria. Now, this is actually the scientific name for the cockroach. So it's actually a very accurate name for it. But now, this is, in, in the minds of most of you who are not biologists, this is a new container. It's a fresh container that we could put anything inside it. So if we start describing it in positive terms, 
we will realize that this is a very resilient creature, very smart creature. It can fly, it has protein in it, and so on and so forth. As a matter of fact, my favorite description that came from the, one of the people I trained was, it's a roommate. She said she has so many at her room that she calls them from now on her roommate. So she can deal with them, right? And I bet if we, co if we continue viewing it in that way, we won't be that inclined to try to get rid of it anymore. Not that, not that we have succeeded anyway. We've been trying to get rid of this creature for quite some time. Now, sometimes when I talk like that, people say, are you encouraging people to be in denial? When there is a problem, it's a problem. And let them call it a problem. But I don't think so. This is actually a story that uh, really touched me of um, a gentleman who had contracted a rare disease that both his legs and arm have to be amputated. And he refers to, the, to that year that all this drama happened to him as the best he has ever had. And I, I don't think he was happy to have the disease, but I think what he was referring to is the fact that that difficult time made him see new capabilities inside him, made him see the love, the support of his family and friends. And he made a choice not to be bitter and disappointed and frustrated, but to own his attitude towards what has happened to him. Now, I thought also of sharing this with the world. So I started a massive open online course. I called it Success. And one of the cornerstone of that course is to change your language so that you can have self-awareness, you can have self-management, you can have social awareness and relationship management and work towards your own success and happiness and towards having great relationships with the people uh, around you. The course ended up having 5,000 students from more than 140 different countries. And I would like to very quickly share with you some of the success stories of the people who took my course and removed the P word from their life and from their language. So uh, Robert is a CEO of a company in the United States, and um, he used the idea of removing the P word and replacing it with opportunity in one of the Kaizen or brainstorming sessions in his company, and also make people pay money when they utter the P word. And according to him, that his, his colleagues now, they reframe before they open their mouths. So isn't that amazing? So it can be used in a business setting as well. So Humaira Ansari is a, a hypnotherapist in the, in the United Kingdom. And in her words, she said, stripping the P word of its power was one of the most useful concepts she used with her clients. So people come to her having issues and by Changing the language, she strips the power from that word, and that actually helped um, a number of them. Uh, Firial works in healthcare, and she started uh, on the course actually a couple of months ago, and she started changing her language. And she said people around her started seeing a change in her, and they asked her, what's happening? So when she shared this with her team, um, now they all utilize the, the technique, and they have to pay money when they mention the P word, and that has gamified the entire work and they are having it better and easier, more, more enjoyable to work towards very strict timeline and achieving their sales targets and so on and so forth. This is my favorite one. Uh, Michael Sony, uh, he's from India and he, uh, he, he stutters, and, but he loves to do public speaking. And you could imagine if you stutter and you are facing a lot of people, uh, this is a big, P word for him. But the moment he replaced it, he replaced the P word with the word opportunity, he said, I see stutter now as my friend. It changed my life like magic. Stutter didn't disappear, but I see it now first as a sign that I'm probably speaking too fast and I need to slow down. And it also breaks down the monotonous uh, uh, speech that I'm talking and it allows me to you know, make my uh, speech more interesting. So isn't that an amazing way of dealing with uh, uh, or seeing a P word as an opportunity? Sandro is from Italy and he worked for a courier company. 
But his dream was always to become a, a tour guide, to take people around the beautiful historical places in Italy. And here, because of the course and because of changing the P word into opportunity, he managed to make that move and start his own business. And he's now have his own clients who come from all over the world to see the beautiful places all over uh, Italy. Now, this is uh, one of my favorite. So Paul Koba is from Tanzania. And this person got married because of the course. I was checking my course one morning, and I was amazed to see this picture of him. And he say that he had some issues with himself, that he was unable to speak to that beautiful lady, the love of his life. And when he changed the P word with the word opportunity, somehow he was able to speak to her and they got married at the end of 2013. So now, the last thing I want to say is, we have heard people saying that we live in a world that's made out of our words. A person could tell you a nice word, and you will feel happy and excited for the whole day. And you could hear a negative word, and you feel sad for weeks. So as you go, about your life. Be careful what language you use. Be careful what labels you put on people and on situations that face you. And with this, I would like you to dream big, be different, have fun, and say no to the P word. Thank you very much.